Hi, uh, I'm Andrew and I will now show you uh, some of the features that my free CI-CD-like solution for managing PowerShell content in uh, Active Directory offers. Uh, so you can have some functions, modules and uh, variables on all your client in a fully automated way. Uh, okay, so uh, I have this uh, testing environment uh, where I have this uh, MGM server uh, which manages uh, this solution. Uh, I have uh, admin PC uh, where I will make changes uh, to repository uh, that will then uh, propagate uh, to the client. Uh, so I have this uh, one uh, Active Directory client. Okay, uh, so let's start uh, with uh, some use cases. Uh, I will start with uh, use case which uh, where I uh, create new PowerShell function and uh, share it uh, with my colleagues. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, Git repository, and uh, here I have uh, some examples which I will use. Okay, so this is my function. So, um, okay, so this is uh, the function I want to share with my colleagues. Uh, it will uh, output uh, locked, uh, locked on users on a given computer. Okay, so uh, I will check that this function isn't available in any of PowerShell console. And you can see it is uh, uh, not available. Okay, so now, uh, now uh, I will commit it. As you can see, uh, I have some uh, some checks uh, that will warn me about some uh, fix me command here, uh, but I uh, I know that it's okay. So I will continue in commit. Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> there is another check. Uh, commit. Uh, I have this check that a commit has to be in this uh, in this format. Okay. So once again, yeah, fix me is okay. Now, uh, when the commit uh, is done, uh, I can wait uh, before it uh, prop propagates to every client, or I can uh, run this command, and it will automatically uh, update uh, this uh, this computer's data, and uh, also uh, imports them uh, to this running console. Okay, and you can see that the function is available and I can run it and it's working. Okay, uh, so now I will switch to uh, some other computer in my environment. Again, fun uh, function is not available here yet, but I can refresh uh, call this refresh command against uh, remote clients also, so I'll run it. Now when I open a new PowerShell window, I can see that function is available. So this is quite easy. Okay, so uh, that was new function. Uh, now uh, I will change this function a little bit. 
so I will, for example, uh, output uh, computer name uh, of the uh, of the of the computer where the function is running. Uh, okay. So now uh, I will. I will commit this change. Yeah, fix me is still okay. And uh, again, I refresh this running console. And again, run this uh, function. And as you can see, now it is uh, outputting uh, the computer name, uh, this computer name, uh, where the function is uh, was uh, was started. Uh, if I run it against different computer in Active Directory, it's still uh, showing its name. Okay, again, uh, I can easily uh, refresh data on some remote computer. And as I said, uh, the data uh, will be refreshed automatically on itself uh, in uh, about 30 minutes. But uh, uh, in case I want to, uh, I don't want to uh, wait, I can uh, force it like this way. Um, I'll run new publisher window, and as you can see, uh, it's uh, I'm using the new function. Okay, so this was about uh, new function and making some changes to it. Uh, now, what about the distribution of uh, new publisher module to all clients? I will take this one. Uh, Copy it to my repository to modules section. I will commit it. These are again some checks uh, about the encoding of the files, but uh, in uh, case of the third party modules, uh, leave uh, the encoding as it is. Uh, in other cases, uh, you can uh, break uh, the module because it could be signed or, or whatever. Okay, so I commit a new module. Uh, I will check that it is not already on this computer. Okay, uh, as you can see, there is no PowerShell access uh, module. So again, I will run a refresh, a refresh command. Uh, now I will check uh, the available modules again. And as you can see, there is publisher access control with version uh, 3. Um, okay, uh, what about um, deletion of that module? Because uh, it's, uh, it's, let's say, no um, more uh, needed. Okay, so I will delete it from my repository. Again, refresh this console. Uh, 
list available modules and as you can see uh PowerShell access control module isn't here anymore okay so uh, this was uh, the distribution of uh, PowerShell modules and now what about uh, cre creation of some global PowerShell variable which will be available in uh, all uh, sessions uh, functions and scripts anywhere uh, for this to work I have this variables uh, PowerShell module uh, where I store these global uh, variables so uh, I will create some uh, uh, SMTP server uh, variable which will contain some uh, some non-existing name of some exchange server or whatever uh, I will check that it's this variable uh, is empty now and commit this change <clears throat> yeah uh, another check uh, that will warn me about uh, about uh, the variable that it is used in some function in this repository yeah i i know this this is okay and uh, i will continue in commit this is some uh, kind of precaution so you uh, don't uh, break uh, things okay again refresh console I will check the variable again and you can see that it is filled now. So I can use it in functions, etc. Uh, again, I can run this again. Uh, again, my remote client. And check the new PowerShell console. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, here I have to uh, import the variables module because uh, uh, here I don't have my global PowerShell profile that uh, do it for me. And you can see uh, variable is available. Okay, so that was about uh, global PowerShell variables. And uh, the last example uh, will be creation of scheduled task on some remote computer, which will run PowerShell script from this repository, uh, which will run PowerShell function we created earlier. Okay, uh, for this, I have uh, this example. So I will. Copy it to another section, this one. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, I have this uh, PowerShell script uh, which will which will run this function which is uh, globally available on clients already. And as we know, uh, this function will uh, output uh, locally locked users and uh, save it to some log file. Uh, moreover, uh, from this XML definition of scheduled task, uh, I will automatically create a corresponding scheduled task that will run this, this uh, PowerShell script. This PowerShell script, okay. So, uh, what I have to do is to define where this uh, where this folder will be distributed. Okay, uh, I will distribute it to. Uh, 
this computer, which is a uh, uh, real host name of this some. Uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, I rename it. Uh, so, uh, so I will distribute it to some uh, IAD client computer, uh, and I will define that the scheduled task, which is defined by, by this XML, will be also created from this definition file. Okay, I will commit this change. I will, okay, I will commit it. Here I will check schedule task scheduler that it doesn't contain uh, this newly created schedule task already. Okay, so you can see there uh, there is none. Now I will uh, refresh the client so do new data and make necessary customization. And now, when I refresh the cons uh, this task schedule console, you can see there is new schedule task, which will uh, every 10 minutes locked who is, uh, who is um, actually uh, locked to this computer and run this uh, script which will uh, which was uh, downloaded uh, from our repository automatically so it's stored here this is the script this is the xml definition and here when i run this manually Here is created the uh, output file, which contains information about who is actually uh, locked to the computer. And as you can see, this script file just call our function, which is different in our repository. Okay. So that was uh, some of the basic uh, function or features uh, for my solution. Uh, if you want to watch uh, uh, a longer version of this uh, video, uh, you can uh, do it here uh, at this URL. Uh, this repository and all uh, necessary data and information, instruction, how to set it uh, in your own environment is uh, hosted in my GitHub repository on this URL. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.